Welcome to Front Row. Hope you all are doing really great. In this video session, we are going to implement lazy loading with actual use case. It would be a great fun. So let's begin with the agenda. So in this session, we are going to walk through of an application which has to be improved. Create a separate model which uh, will be converted into lazy loaded module. We will learn how to implement lazy loaded modules. At the end of this session, you should have a good understanding of lazy loading. We often wonder what is lazy loading or lazy loaded modules, why we need them and when. Do they improve application performance? Let's park these questions for time being and have a quick walkthrough of an application where we will implement lazy loaded modules and understand the actual use case. Okay, let me log in into the system. So I can put uh, xyz at maybe abc.com. It's a password. Here uh, we can see that it's listing few products. It, we can add products, search from the existing products. And uh, if I click on the product ID, it will take me to the new page where it will load its uh, description along with images some few details like the the price and the category all right okay let's uh, jump into the code in this application we have few components like login product product details grid etc and a routing module which will take care of all routings assume our product details page may grow further it may have more components something like comparing with similar products or some chart for analytics so it would be a good idea to wrap them into different module currently they are part of app module so what is module don't get confused with javascript i'm referring to angular module so in angular context we can say a module is a way to group components pipes directives and services okay great now let's create a new module so here we have uh, a module folder and inside that we have an angular material model right now so let me create another module let me close this so here i'm just generating a module with angular cli ng4 stands for angular g for generate m for modules and this is the path all right okay let's see if the model has been created fine that's great so we have model with us now let's create a folder inside this module folder which is going to be components and then I'll drag this product detail components to this folder yes update all the references I'm going to rename it as detail only because we are already inside product details components then details so this does make sense okay i have renamed all of them i have updated template url and style url as well now this should be part of our new model which is product detail model let's import it all right now let me go to app module so we have to remove this from here because a component cannot be part of two modules all right now save everything ok 
okay good so far and the one thing they may switch is this model would be part of our app module now let's import it here okay now let's compile the application All right, compiled successfully. Now let's go to browser. Let's log in again. Okay, it's working fine. But wait, why we are grouping all these components into a separate module? It was already working, right? So what is the need? Let me explain with the help of a diagram. Initially, we had only one module which was app module and app module was consisting app component, product component, product details component and grid component. But we have split it to two different module, app module and product details module. And we are assuming that product details module may have further component that can be added to product details module which are maybe a chart component or a product comparison component so it may grow but still we are not clear why we have created two different modules so let's try to understand from the browser again so assume there are different users on different role one user has the uh, is more on interested to you know adding products or searching the products right is not interested to you know click on these links and see the details right or maybe the, he has not he has not that permission all right so in that context if we club everything all together and you know big module would be rendered on the browser right so that takes a lot of time if we keep everything in a single module and we'll try to give a first colorful pen to the end user it takes a lot of time isn't it so can we do something like this uh, when user needs a different module you know then we should deliver that chunk Yes, that can be done with the lazy loaded models. So what happens, uh, uh, let's con consider another scenario where this particular link, suppose if I want to send this links into, uh, into, you know, integrated into an email. So if a user clicks on this link directly, he will be, you know, landed with uh, this screen where you can see the details and description and all those things. So in that context, he, that user is not interested for this main module rather he would be interested on the product details model only so we can you know provide the different chunk on demand okay we understood what is the requirement and right now we have two models app model and product details modules but there is a problem with this strategy product details models is a part of our app model so in turn actually it's building a single chunk i mean single javascript source code so when as soon as we load app model it also loads product details model which is not correct so let's find out what should we do and what steps we are going to follow to implement lazy loaded module okay so the first things we are going to do in app module routing we will implement a different way of routing something like this so here the load children actually loads the model dynamically all right and the next step would be in product details module routing we will implement another routing which is a default route and that will load the product details component so there are two things the first things we will disconnect product details module from app module and implement a routing a lazy loaded routing and in product details uh, routing we will implement a default route okay so let's jump into the code and make all these changes so here you can see uh, i have completely removed product details module and don't have any reference even uh, product details component has been also removed from app module and in app routing module.ts i have created a new path which is prod detail and here is the load children which actually uh, provides a path where the our module is right with the then operator we are actually loading the entire module and if i take you to the product details module you will see that 
uh, here we have a default route and that loads our product details component and that has been declared as a part of this module so one another catch is that this routes should be assigned as for child whereas in app routing modules this should be assigned as for root all right so this is the difference product details model is going to have as for child and app routing models is going to have these routes as for root all right now let's build this application to see whether it creates a different chunk or not okay so it successfully built the application and now we see there is a new js file Okay, now let me serve the application as well. Before we jump into the application, you must realize that it has multiple chunks here. So all we want, wanted to have a new chunk for our product address model, which is already ready. Now we need to verify whether this chunk is dynamically loaded or not. So let's jump into the browser. Let me go to the network tab and let's log into the system xyz at abc.com the password right now the password can be anything i'm not validating it okay right now you see this uh, at this moment we it only loads main.js and the moment I click on this uh, ID, it will take me to the new path, which will trigger the lazy loader module. And you will find there is a, another chunk has been loaded into the browser. All right. By implementing lazy loader modules, you can see this uh, 212 bytes has been downloaded separately it's not uh, clubbed with the main module on the other hand uh, you can also save the 61 microseconds here uh, which might have been included while you will download main module so this is a great example where you can create multiple chunks if your application is growing and you have multiple modules so it would be a best use case to use lazy loaded modules and provide them when user need them so it would be downloaded only when user demand it okay let's quickly recap in order to implement lazy loaded module first of all we should split our app or main module next we should create a new module and uh, remove all the references from the main model like removing component references in main model we should implement uh, lazy loaded routes here in this example in lazy loaded module we have to create a default route which will which will render the main component of that module all right so what are the takeaway lazy loaded module creates a new chunk this chunk will be downloaded to browser on user demand our main app module will remains small and can be downloaded in short span of time in a nutshell lazy loaded modules improves application performance to great extent hope you have enjoyed this video uh, and it must have been great learning uh, I have already published few videos earlier. You might like to explore my channel uh, on different topics like differential loading, angular performance, uh, on different aspects like change detection, web worker. Uh, even you can uh, explore further on that how we can secure our application. So there are few videos. Explore it. Do subscribe it and share with your colleagues and friends. Uh, stay tuned with more technical videos or more interesting videos we are going to have really great learning ahead thanks for your precious time bye bye take care